Hello, welcome to North London. From this unlikely location, we're going to take a picture of deep space. And we're not going to do it with an expensive setup like this. It's about 3,000 quid. Don't tell my wife. 3,000 quid. We're going to do it on a budget. We're going to do it on a budget of 150 quid. Um, I'm thinking we're going to take a shot of the Orion Nebula for 150 quid from this roof. Deep space for 150 pounds. There's a number of problems that we're going to have to overcome. The first one is obviously I'm in London. Probably one of the most light polluted cities in the world. I'm in zone two, not as bad as being in zone one, you may think. And yet, I'm North London, which means I'm looking south, which means I'm looking directly into zone one. So all of London's light pollution comes up here. So that's a big problem. The other problem is I can't shoot from the garden. We've got a little garden surrounded by terraced houses and cherry trees and squirrels and stuff. Can't shoot from down there. I have to come up onto the roof. The roof is bouncy. What that means is when I'm trying to take a photograph of some distant galaxy, the photons have spent 200 million years traveling across empty space. Quite easy, quite plain sailing for them. And they have to try and get through our atmosphere. They have to try and get through all of London's light pollution. And finally, they make it to my telescope. And they go in through the lens and they're just about to hit the sensor on the back of my camera. And the kids slam the door and the camera vibrates and it ends up being all blurry and rubbish. So we've got the light pollution, we've got the wobbly roof. Of course, we've got the weather. Most of the time, the weather's pretty shit in the UK. I think we get about two decent nights a month. That's my, my reckoning. It's actually clear tonight, but it's windy. So uh, that's why I got this out. So despite the light pollution, despite the weather, despite the bounce roof, despite the budget of 150 quid, I believe we can get a brilliant shot of deep space. And if we don't, I'm going to look an absolute plonker. But fail, win or lose, I'm going to show you my results. We're going to do it. The target. There she is, the Orion Nebula. We took this with a big telescope. How close are we going to be able to get? The only way we're going to get it is if we can beat the light pollution. We could use the nebula itself to help us do that. Okay, now the gas at its centre is being heated by stars that are being born. And these stars heat the gas up and then the gas glows. Hydrogen glows in a, a nice red. The oxygen glows in a turquoise colour and the sulphur glows in a deep red colour. So what I have here is what's called a light pollution filter. It's a broadband light pollution filter. It allows the nice red light from the hydrogen to go through. It allows the nice turquoise light from the oxygen to pass through it. But what it doesn't let through is the yellow. Here's a yellow piece of card. Orion doesn't give off much yellow. Street lights do, and look, it totally takes away the yellow. So if I pull this back, yellow, yellow now gone. My red stays the same. Should also be some blue in there. Yeah, but the yellow goes. So sodium street lights are yellow. It's going to get rid of those. It only cost me five pounds. This I bought it off a website called Astro Buy and Sell. But we also need a camera. Here's my camera. I bought it off eBay, second-hand, £50, is a Canon 1000D, or Rebel, known as a Rebel in the States. The reason it was £50 is because it was for spares and repair. The back LCD screen wasn't working. I've taken out the LCD screen, I've cut a hole in the back. On the sensor, I have put a, a heat sink and a fan. Now, I bought the heat sink and fan from Maplin, cost me 10 quid. Done something else to the camera too. If I take a picture, you'll be able to see. Okay, if you look in there, you'll see the sensor. And the sensor had a infrared filter across it. That filter blocks out some of the red light coming from the hydrogen and the sulfur. Taking that filter out makes this an awesome camera for astrophotography. To attach the camera to the telescope, I need a telescope extension tube. It cost me 8.99. I've got a Canon 
adapter which has got an M42 thread which screws on the back of my extension. This end goes in the camera like this. My light pollution filter which costs five quid goes on the front. I made the bold claim that we'd be able to take a photograph of Orion for 150 quid and so far I spent 50 quid on the camera, about 10 quid on the fan and the heat sink, another 10 quid on the extension tube and adapter and five pound on the filter that's 75 quid. I've got just 75 quid left which means we need a telescope and an electronic computerized mount to track the stars with the telescope so that I can take a photo of it. I need to get both those things for 75 quid. And I know of one on eBay that if we're lucky I can get for, well if no one else bids on it it's 80 quid. So let's hope no one else bids on it. eBay auctions, remaining budget, 75 Earth pounds. Uh, oh my god. Um, so I'm going to bid, come on quick, confirm bid, five seconds left, on a 80 pound telescope. And have I won it? One bid. Yes, I've got it. We have just bought a Star Travel 102 Sync Scan AZ Go To telescope and mount, which retails at £389. And ours is obviously second hand, but we got it for 80 quid, which is awesome. Okay, I have to go and pick it up now. Very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Don't forget your same with bag. All right, lovely. Thanks, mate. And I wish you joy of Orion the Pearl. So uh, that's good. All right, cheers, mate. It's great. That is the final piece of the puzzle, the final bit of the jigsaw. We now have everything we need to shoot a picture of Orion.